We all have a finite amount of time. No matter what you do, you have 24 hours a day. That's not a lot. If you're transitioning into data science and at the same time working or having other responsibilities in life, it's really important to know how to learn data science smarter and faster. Hi everyone, my name is Tuvu. I started working in data science five years ago, first as a data analyst and now as a data science consultant. My background back then was in economic research, so apart from some statistics, I knew very little about programming, machine learning, and the software side of things. So much of the data science knowledge and skills I've gained over the past years were picked up through self-study or on the job, and then partly through my computer science degree very later on. So in this video, I'm going to share with you everything I know about how to learn data science smarter and faster. Multidisciplinary is probably the best word to describe data science. Therefore, knowing what to learn is probably far more important than how to learn because resources are more abundant than ever nowadays to help you learn anything. Here are the main skills in data science that you want to learn as you progress through the journey. Firstly, programming, it can be R or Python or SQL. Secondly, it's fundamental math and statistics, which is the real legend behind data science. I talked about how to learn math in detail in another video over here. Then we have data analysis, which includes data wrangling, exploratory data analysis, and data visualization. Next, we have data scraping and data APIs for data collection in case you have to collect data yourself, which is also a fun thing to do. Then we have machine learning, including supervised and unsupervised learning. If you want to work with unstructured data, you might also want to learn a bit deep learning and NLP. There's also reinforcement learning, but I believe it belongs more to a broader AI field, so I'll leave it for now. Moving towards more backend topics, we have data structures and algorithms, databases, software development, and deployment. I got a lot of questions from you that are like, how much Python is enough for data analyst? How much math Math is enough for data scientists, or what should I learn, SQL first or Python first, Power BI first or cooking dinner first? Well, the last one I just made up. These questions are often unnecessary. Let me tell you why. The order in which you learn these skills doesn't matter that much. If you keep wondering what you should learn first, you are losing time. I think there are only a few things that you absolutely must learn first. They are basic programming and basic math and statistics. The rest you can learn as you go. For the question of how much is enough, my rule of thumb is to learn something until you can actually do something useful with it. Ideally, you can solve a complete use case with your skills. We'll talk more about the use cases and the project-based learning in a bit. How much of these different skills you should learn also depends on what you do in data science. Data science is absolutely not just a one single job title. It's more a continuum of many different roles ranging from back-end to front-end data science. If you want to become a data analyst, which is more to the front end and business facing end of spectrum than basic programming, data wrangling, descriptive statistics, and data visualization are often the most important skills for the job. Machine learning? Not so much. Probably knowing a bit linear regression and logistic regression is enough. If you want to do more predictive modeling and machine learning as a data scientist, this often requires more in-depth math and statistics. You should also know the ins and outs of EDAs, different machine learning algorithms, and some data scraping as well. If you want to become a machine learning engineer, which is further into the back end and production side of things, then on top of what is required for a data scientist, also be sure to learn more advanced programming, databases, software development, and deployment as well. And the best way to learn these skills, it is to find a use case and start doing projects. A data science use case often involves a combination of skills we just mentioned. So you'll see very clearly how these different skills come together to help you solve a real-world problem. For example, a house price prediction project will require you to do exploratory data analysis on the data set. In this case, if you download data from Kaggle, you probably don't need to clean the data. You might also do some data visualization to gain more insight on how the data is distributed and how different variables are correlated to each other. This is a lot of small exercises that will help you connect the dots 
thoughts and learn the concepts faster. Rotating constantly between the theory and the practice might seem like a slow way to learn, but it's actually the most sure way for you to learn anything at all. I'm currently working on a project which, spoiler alert, will be about The Witcher. You may know about The Witcher fantasy novel or the Netflix series or video game. I can't spoil you too much about the upcoming project videos, but it will involve web scraping, NLP to extract information from the books, network analysis, and visualization. Doing projects also teaches you other valuable skills, for example, setting up a project, problem solving, debugging, and finally, you have to read and understand API documentation. In another video, I showed you how to create a real-world data project and collect YouTube data with YouTube API, so you could see the whole process of creating a project, how I made silly errors and digged into the documentation while googling stuff half the time behind the scene, of course. On my Python dashboard video, I saw a lot of you commented and asked me questions about some random errors that you got. Errors suck, I know, but remember, computers are stupid. They only do what you tell them to do. In addition, 99% of all the errors you got or questions you have have already been asked by someone else on the internet. So instead of freaking out, you can just copy the error into Google and probably find a solution faster than asking a random YouTuber on the internet, no matter how kind and helpful she might seem to be. That's actually true though. Here are a few things you want to keep in mind when starting a project. Firstly, start small, like really, really small, because otherwise you never get started. Momentum is very important. For example, sometimes I just feel so tired and lazy and I don't want to start anything. I just tell myself, okay, I'll I'll just do for two minutes. I will open my notebook, I'll import panels as speedy, then I'll read in some data set. Mission accomplished, then having this momentum, I can just keep going very easily. Secondly, do projects even when you're a beginner, because this is going to be the fastest way for you not to be a beginner. If it feels too difficult, learning and adapting some simple projects other people already made is a great start. Thirdly, make it fun and unique if possible. There's another video here on my channel, how I come up with fun and unique projects for myself. You can check it out here. Lastly, remember to show your work. Push it on GitHub, write about it, vlog about it, and get feedback. If you still have any doubts about doing projects, please go back to the first point. It's too much to learn, I feel unmotivated, and I can't focus. It's probably what most of us feel when learning data science. There is no doubt that you're not going to learn data science within a week or a month. It is more realistic to think you'll be a lifelong student and every day you want to learn or do something data science related in order to make progress and to keep up with the development of the field. If you can't find the focus and motivation to learn, even if you have the time and know what you need to learn, this often boils down to knowing your learning style. Depending on your brain type, you can have different focus energies and different learning styles. I learned this from Mike and Maddie's videos. I'm gonna try my best to summarize it, but you're definitely gonna check out their videos and the quiz links in the description. They define three learning styles and their associated behaviors. The Kitsune is the type who is sensitive to overstimulation. You are very fast learners, spontaneous, and also quick to forget. Your motivation comes and goes very quickly, and therefore you often have problems with following through with your work. On the other hand, the Torah is steady, constant, and ambitious learners. Once you start, you can just keep going without taking much break. You are often organized and methodological. The Kuma is a type of humans who are chill and easygoing. They are slow but steady learners. They, they learn slowly but also forget slowly. But once you find the momentum, you can progress very quickly quickly with your work. I'm a Kisune, so I try hard to avoid distractions such as my phone and emails while learning or working. I also like to do laser focus work in short bursts and rotate among different subjects because I get bored very quickly. For example, I'm learning math and I get bored of math, I'll turn to a more hands-on coding project or read about something completely different and then somehow I'll get remotivated to learn math again. So my main task is to write the ups and downs of my motivation and make sure I use the most out of the moments I feel most productive. Rigid calendar, schedule, and to-do list often do not work very well for me. If you're a Torah, having clear goals and set schedule and a learning roadmap will motivate you. You're ambitious and can work without much
much break, but you also need to pace yourself and take breaks to avoid burning yourself out. If you're a kuma, you might want to start small to gradually build your momentum and to get the ball rolling. As you're a chill person, you often need some boost to get going. So working in pairs or groups often help you stay motivated. Most of us probably have a blend of different styles, but knowing your tendencies towards a certain style will help you tailor your approach to learning. As a minute earlier, I'm quick to learn but also quick to forget things, including basic commands and Python or R syntax. So one of the things I did was to create my own cheat sheets, for example here in Notion, so that whenever I need some of these syntax or commands, I can just quickly copy paste stuff. Also, a lot of times I found some useful code from Stack Overflow or something, and then when I need it again, I can't remember where I got it from. On Macs, we have the Best app, which is a clipboard manager to help help you keep and organize what you have copied before, and also where we got it from. Here I have a separate category for goat, so whenever I need something that I know I have copied before, I can just go here and search for it. On Windows, you also have a similar app called Ditto. It's really useful and really saves me a lot of time looking for stuff. In addition, I also like to keep a bunch of cheat sheets that I've collected over time here on my GitHub, so whenever I need something, I can easily access and use them. For coding, I'd definitely recommend you to use code completion to speed up your coding and reduce typos. For example, here in Jupyter Lab, I use the Kite extension for code completion. If you use other popular IDEs such as Sublime, VS Code, or PyCharm, they should have the code completion already built in. To take this thing further, I also have a bunch of keyboard shortcuts in my laptop for common sentences and phrases, which is very useful when I write emails, for example. One additional thing that I find boosts my productivity is speed typing. If you're someone who codes a lot in your work, learning to type with all 10 fingers could really help you with your thinking flow. I don't look at the keyboard when I'm typing so I can type faster and more accurately. And I can also focus on what I'm doing. It's just what I practiced long ago as a nerdy teenager, but I believe you can do it too as an adult. I believe that it's not something you do occasionally, but what you do every day that matters. In the past few years, I've committed myself to learning something new about data science every day. I keep the habit of browsing Medium 30 minutes a day whenever I have time. There's just so much good stuff there. I'll just bookmark those articles that seem interesting and useful, and whenever I have more time, I'll come back to them and see if I can use them for my projects. I also read niche data visualization blogs and news which opens up my mind to some interesting approaches to data visualization. Sometimes I might see some interesting papers I want to try replicate. For example, this one is about the Witcher social network analysis. It inspired me to get my hands dirty and develop my project based on the ideas. Since I started working and doing all this consulting work, I realized that understanding different domains and how a business works is extremely important in data science because it will help you easily identify use cases and problems that can be solved with data. I find that newspapers are a great source to have some brain food every day in data science. I love The Batch, which is a weekly newspaper about deep learning and AI. You can sign up for this on the deeplearning.ai website for free. Their quality is really, really great. The news is full of useful insights about good practice in data science and really important topics in general. Recently, I found Refine. It picks and sends you seven links every day from around the web tailored to your interest. You can choose to get content about machine learning and data science and also a bunch of other tech and social topics as well. Hope this video gave you some inspiration on how to learn data science model and faster. Be sure to check out the portfolio project playlist on my channel and subscribe if you haven't already for the exciting data science content to come. With that, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!